great to see all of you. I'm Susan, I'm the interim pastor here. Warm welcome to those of you on Zoom as well as those of you in the sanctuary. I do not have any announcements. Do any of you have announcements? Yes. Great. Let me just repeat that into the microphone. It's hard to hear through the face mask. The mission offering this month and next month will go to help the UCC Church in Williamstown, uh, Vermont, which had a massive fire and is much in need. Anything else? Okay, I'd like to invite Pam forward to lead us in the call to worship. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great King over all the earth. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a song. And please join me in the opening prayer. O oh God, light of the hearts that see you, light of the souls that love you, strength of the thoughts that seek you, to turn from you is to fall, to turn to you is to rise, to abide in you is to stand fast or forever. For the sake of Jesus Christ, grant us your Holy Spirit. Amen. And now please join us in the opening hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
Christ has risen. Jesus was alive again. One day he said to his friends, stay in Jerusalem. God will send you a special gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give you power, power to tell everyone about me and the kingdom of God. I am going away. You will not see me anymore, but I will be with you always in every place and every time, and I will come again. Then Jesus disappeared into a cloud. Hmm. This is the mystery of ascension. Jesus went away, but somehow he is still with us. And Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ has risen and Christ will come again. This is the mystery of Easter. Now, I, I wonder how Jesus' friends felt when that happened and when Jesus went away. And I wonder if they kept looking for him and, and how they knew that he was still with them. And I wonder how we know that Jesus is still with us today. I wonder. The first scripture reading this morning is from Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Then Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. Our second scripture reading is from Acts 1, verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the, until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, 
Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Thus ends today's readings. Let's pray for a moment. Gracious God, send that promised Holy Spirit among us to focus our attention and open our hearts that we might hear from you today. Amen. Well, here's a subversive statement. Jesus is Lord. And when I say it's a subversive statement, I don't mean it maybe in the sense of some 21st century American people react to that with its implications of hierarchy and maleness. I mean, in the first century, when Jesus' followers were running around saying, Jesus is Lord, it was a subversive statement because everyone who cared about their health knew that Caesar was Lord. And when Jesus' friends said, no, 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 Caesar's not the one in charge. Jesus is the one in charge. Not that despot in Rome with his edicts and his armies and his crosses, but Jesus is Lord. It was controversial, to say the least, and some of them lost their lives with that declaration. Jesus is risen and reigning. As the Apostles' Creed puts it, Jesus ascended to heaven, we heard about that in our Godly Play video, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Now I've got a question for you. When you think about the ascension, I realize probably not something you think about every day, but when you hear me talking about it, are you experiencing resistance or resonance? That is, do you feel a barrier go up? Do you sort of turn away from the thought? Is it, threatening or off-putting, or do you experience resonance, curiosity, excitement, openness? Maybe it's just neutral for you. What I want you to do is just note your reaction. This business of play, paying attention to resistance and resonance in any conversation Anytime you read a book, you see a documentary, whatever, it's a really useful tool. Not because we should always follow those gut feelings, <laughs> but because they tell us something important. So when the doctor says, you want to lose weight, and you feel that resistance going up because you don't want to have to diet, it's worth exploring. What is that really all about? It's not that. You ought to follow your resistance, but you need to pay attention to it. Similarly, maybe someone at church says, you know, I think we ought to change X, Y, or Z. Do you feel that barrier go up? Well, what's that all about? Why is that a threatening idea? In a similar fashion, you know, Hitler was a very persuasive public speaker. Lots of people resonated with what he had to say. And we end up with concentration camps in World War II. Ideas, he promulgated ideas we find utterly um, offensive. It's informative to pay attention to that gut reaction. And I'm saying this because I'm guessing some of you feel resistance over the doctrine of the ascension. And yet even I, who gladly embrace the traditional teachings of the church about these major doctrines, I feel resistance when I see crude depictions of Jesus' feet sticking out of the bottom of clouds. <laughs> you know, it sort of offends my sense of being intellectually credible and sophisticated. But if that's not an entirely pathetic reason to <laughs> object to this doctrine, I don't know what would be. So wh what is the ascension? Well, none of us was there. <laughs> None of us saw it. But here's some things to bear in mind when we think about this doctrine. Heaven and earth 
far from being these vastly separated realms, are really two parallel interlocking realities, God's space and our space. The Jews at Jesus' day understood the temple in Jerusalem to be the intersection of heaven and earth, and you went to the temple to encounter the living God. Those of us who are Jesus followers know him to be that place where heaven and earth intersect. Heaven's usually invisible. Even though apparently it's nearby in one sense, it's invisible to us most of the time. We see in Acts 7, the martyrdom of Stephen, we see Stephen clearly has this vision of heaven as he's dying. And we've all heard and perhaps even witnessed those deathbed scenes where the dying person sees Jesus, sees the angels, sees their late loved ones, and perhaps that's a glimpse into that other realm. Well, Jesus disappears from sight. That must have been startling. He ascends to heaven, um, the, heaven the unseen realm, into God's space, bottom, behind a cloud. Okay, so what's, what's the cloud business? Well, clouds in the Bible are God's, represent God's presence. It's a pillar of cloud that leads the people out of Egypt. Mount Sinai is enveloped in a cloud when God speaks to Moses. The temple, when it's dedicated, is filled with a cloud, and the priest cannot stand before its glory. And of course, at the transfiguration, God speaks from a cloud. I think with the ascension, we're really up against the very same issues we are with all the other overtly supernatural doctrines of the Christian faith. Wrapping our minds and our hearts around the idea that God can do stuff we can't do. Right? Because once we really begin to worship a truly supernatural God, well, of course God can do stuff I can't do. And, you know, the incarnation and the virgin conception and the resurrection and now the ascension is just more stuff God can do that I can't do. But, so Jesus ascends to heaven bodily, a, a doctrine in the scripture and in all the oldest creeds of the church, long proclaimed over centuries universally by the Christian faith. But what's he doing? <laughs> I mean, is he just on vacation? What's he doing? Well, we're told that he is reigning, that he is the new CEO. But how does he reign? Because let's face it, we look around the world and we might be tempted to fire him. I mean, we've got a global pandemic and we've got war and we can't even have civil discourse and we've got racism and food insecurity and climate change and I mean, that's not a very good performance record. Well, of course, the rub is that on this side of the second coming, which is also mentioned in our Godly Play video, this side of the second coming, Jesus reigns through his people. But not in the sense that his original followers thought he would. Listen to what they ask him here in Acts 1. Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Will we be in charge? Will everyone else bow down to us and do our will? And I, and of course, I wasn't there, but I picture Jesus rolling his eyes at this point. Because that's so not what he means. He doesn't mean he's going to reign through his people in the way we often see it happen with Christians acting like Caesar more than like Christ. Jesus reigns through his people, and you have this quote in your bulletins, as the New Testament scholar N.T. Wright puts it, as they, filled with his spirit, go out into the world, vulnerable, suffering, praising, praying, misunderstood, misjudged, vindicating, celebrating, always, as Paul puts it in one of his letters, 
bearing in the body the dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be on display. So it's all that stuff we hear about, all that upside down value stuff we hear about in the Sermon on the Mount, that we respond to hatred with love, that we fully and freely forgive, that we practice faithfulness in our relationships with one another and with God. All that difficult, all that difficult stuff. It's easier to want to act like Caesar than it is to want to act like Christ. But Jesus doesn't say to his friends before he leaves, now sit still and be good and I'll be back for you, or go into your gated community and shut yourself off from the world, or act like a Caesar and take charge. No, he says, wait. Wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit to come. And that's what we celebrate two weeks today with the holiday of Pentecost. And then, having been filled with God's very presence, go out and act like Jesus, being his witnesses in word, what you say, deed, what you do, sign, what you let God do through you. And this, of course, is what we pray every week when we pray the Lord's Prayer, that earth would be more like heaven. So Jesus reigns. But Jesus also prays. And I think this is one of the most reassuring doctrines in the entire New Testament, that Jesus is our king and our priest. And if you want to know more, <laughs> this might not have been on your to-do list this week, but if you want to know more about what it means that Jesus is our great high priest, Go home, turn to the New Testament letter of Hebrews and read chapters 4 through 10. One is a priest. You know, a priest is a mediator. Someone who mediates between God and people. And in Jesus' day, the priests at the temple prayed for the people and they offered sacrifices on their behalf. It fell more often to the rabbis to teach the faith. But what they did in this imperfect partial and limited way, Jesus does fully, permanently, and completely. And as Hebrews says, for Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. I love the idea that Jesus is praying for me, because I need it. <laughs> I need it. And as Paul puts it, in what is perhaps my favorite chapter of the New Testament, Romans 8, if God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, and who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. He's on your side. He's praying for you. Now, he's not on your side in the sense of being against other people. It's not that you'll always get the promotion, win the prize, or make the team. But God himself, is rooting for you as you run this race. Rooting for you, cheering you on, and praying for you as you pursue holiness, as you pursue living out the kingdom of God, as you pursue wholeness and wellness. So as we enter into silence, I invite you to think about the ascended and reigning Christ praying for you in the courts of heaven. Listen in on that. How is it that God prays when he prays for you? And see if you have the courage to join your prayers with his. Let us enter into silence now.
Jesus is ascended. He reigns and he prays. Amen. our time to share joys and concerns as we go into prayer. Are there any prayer concerns you'd like included in this morning's prayers? Yes? Okay. Prayers for Rosemary's healing and well-being. Anything else? Yes? Prayers for joy and thanksgiving for all of the mothers. That's right. It's Mother's Day. And we will be praying about our mothers and giving thanks for them. Yes? Hi, baby Oliver still needs our prayers, unfortunately. Um, he, he is in the NICU. Okay. And he's been there for a while, and he's not making the kind of progress they'd like him to make. Yeah, okay, that's very concerning. So let's pray for Oliver's healing. Anything else? Okay, well, you'll have the opportunity to add prayers as we go along if things occur to you. Um, so the way that this is formatted today is we will be praying for global concerns and praying for the church around the world and praying about these sorts of very personal things we just mentioned. That's the third movement. And um, we'll also be praying and giving thanks for all the people who mothered us, which may or may not be your biological mother, and praying for mothers as well. And then we'll wind up praying that great prayer Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and if something other than English is the language closest to your heart, feel free to pray in your heart language. So let us pray. Holy God, what right have we to enter your presence? but the right granted us by your Son, our Savior. You raised up Christ to rule over all creation, giving him the name which is above every name. Let at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, and every tree shall clap, and every river shall sing, and every rock shall cry out in joy. 
we bow before you, our King and Priest. Receive now the praise and thanks we offer in the silence. As our mediator, you stand before God, petitioning God on our behalf, and so we boldly bring you our prayers for this troubled world. I invite you to now silently or audibly offer prayers for global concerns. We bring to you our prayers for your church in her many forms. And again, I invite you to silently, audibly pray for God to work through his church. And we bring our prayers for those close to our hearts, for Rosemary, and Oliver much in need of healing and for those we name before you now silently or audibly And on this Mother's Day, we give you thanks for all the people who have mothered us. Again, I invite you silently or audibly to name those people before God. And Lord, we pray for mothers broken by grief, worn down by responsibility, short on grace. For women who long to be mothers and women overwhelmed by being mothers. And for those mothering under great adversity, in refugee camps, in war zones, on hospital wards. For those with children on the battlefield and those who visit their children in jail. And for those who wonder where their children will sleep tonight or what they will eat tonight. We pray, Lord have mercy. And now hear us as we join our voices to pray as Jesus taught his friends to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Open your hearts to receive the benediction. May the love of the cross and the power of the resurrection and the presence of the living Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.